What's going on guys? Kevin here from thesportsgeek.com and in this video I'm going over my DraftKings PGA picks for the Byron Nelson Championship. So at the end of this video, if you enjoyed it, make sure you click the thumbs up button on YouTube so I know to keep making videos like this. And in this video, I'm gonna give out four PGA picks and I'm gonna talk about a couple other players. You can see here, I've got the Fancy Labs uh, Sports Geek model pulled up. This is now a pro model on Fantasy Labs. Everyone has access to it if you have a Fantasy Labs subscription. If you don't yet, make sure you click on that link in the YouTube description below to sign up for Fantasy Labs. You will not regret it. So I'm logged into my Sports Geek model. Uh, I've got four picks here. The picks are going to have the 100 in the exposure just to show who they are. But I'm going to start off by talking about Dustin Johnson. So he's rated uh, the top on my model by five points. So he's rated 81.03. The next is 76.5. Uh, so quite a big gap there. Uh, easily the best player, uh, probably the best DraftKings player for projections at least before the tournament starts. And he'll easily be the highest owned player. I'm guessing he'll be about 35 to 40%. So I haven't really figured out what I'm gonna do with the high price guys. I pretty much like every high price guy, maybe uh, other than maybe Schwartzel and Zach Johnson, I probably won't play it, uh, either of them, but I like pretty much every other high price guy, Kucher, Ustase, and Hoffman, uh, Spieth, Garcia, and Johnson. So I haven't really figured out what I'm gonna do. Uh, for Dustin Johnson, there's two ways I'm going to play it. I think he'll be about 35 to 40% owned. So I'm either going to match the field there or I'm going to fade him a little bit and play him in maybe 10% of my lineup. So be a little bit contrarian and fade him. I'm not going to go 100% on Dustin Johnson. I just like to be a little bit contrarian. Uh, if I do go the contrarian route and play him in maybe 10% of my lineups, I expect to lose maybe nine times out of 10. Uh, most of the time he'll go off for a pretty big tournament and the people that played him will pay off for them. But uh, being contrarian, you gotta, you gotta uh, be able to lose to eventually win. So if I do end up fading him, I'm basically hoping that he misses the cut or at least doesn't play too well over the weekend or something. Uh, so that the 35, 40% of people uh, don't do well. So I'm not gonna go all in on Dustin Johnson. I might uh, match the exposure and go about 35 to 40% or I might fade him, I'm not too sure. Uh, Sergio Garcia, I like him. Uh, I think his game fits up, fits well for this course. Uh, his price is all right at 10,400. You can see last week, he's come up a bit from last week just because the field's weaker. But uh, last week he finished 54th, which might scare some people away, but he put up 77 DraftKings points. He had a ton of birdies. He might have had as many birdies as Jason Day. He just had a lot of bogeys. I think he had a quad bogey on uh, Thursday or Friday. Put up 77 DraftKings points and get like 23 birdies, something crazy like that. So he's playing well. I really like him too. Uh, the picks for this video are all going to be in the maybe seven to 9,000 range, I believe. So starting off, my first pick here is Gary Woodland at 8,500. Again, I think he'll be a popular play, but you can see here he's ranked third on my model and he's at 8,500. So he's ranking above guys like Jordan Spieth, uh, Charlie Hoffman, a lot of the higher priced guys, and he's at 8,500. So very good play. A uh, good cash game play, I think. Uh, I think he'll be high owned in GPPs, but I'll still probably be playing him. He's a golfer. You probably, if you watch my videos in the past, uh, this whole year I've been on him quite a bit. He just hits the ball far. If he can get his putting down for one tournament, I think he has a good chance of winning. And this is a tournament that I think he could win uh, with a bit weaker field. So he doesn't put up uh, crazy DraftKings scores, but you can see he's put, consistently put up over 60 in his last four tournaments. He's usually a guy who finishes right around uh, 20th to 30th place. So I think he's another safe play, uh, knock on wood. Hopefully he makes another cut, puts up at least 60 DraftKings points. I'm really hoping for maybe a, a 70 to 80 at least uh, this week with my exposure on him probably being pretty high, but uh, we'll see how that goes. I think he's a good play, uh, GPPs and cash. Uh, next up, my next play, this would be the ultimate cash play probably, just given his rating. Uh, he's the fourth highest rated in my model, and he's only 7,500, Lucas Glover. I'll probably be playing him in GPPs quite a bit, even though I think I've already heard people talk about him, so I think he'll be kind of popular for his price at least, uh, probably in the 15% range. Uh, but I'll be playing him as well. You can see his recent tournaments, 27th, 57th, 33rd, 31st, 8th, and uh, he's put up at least 50 DraftKings points in all five, over 70 in two. Uh, he's a great uh, tee to green player. Let me just see here. Yeah, he ranks 20th uh, strokes gained tee to green. It's just his putting that isn't the best. 
Uh, birdie or better percentage, 77th. So yeah, he's a, he's a good golfer, good draft, pretty good drafting score for 7,500. I think he's a good play. And then we've got a bunch of high range golfers uh, in here that I'm going to skip over. I like Ryan Palmer quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to skip over Ch Charles Howell the third this week at 8,200, even though he ranks higher than uh, one of my other picks that is at 8,000, as you can see down here. I'm going to skip over him. He's missed two straight cuts. Uh, it could be a good week to jump back on him, but I think I'm just going to stay off him. I got another a couple other players that I like in this range. So next up, we got Jonathan Vegas at 7,100. Again, a golfer that's uh, been pretty consistent. He hasn't put up any crazy high drafting scoring uh, weeks. I guess he came fifth at the New Orleans, put up 84, which is pretty good. But other than that, he hasn't placed uh, too high, but he's been pretty consistent. He's missed uh, one cut over his last seven tournaments. So he's a pretty good, uh, consistent golfer at 7,100. It's a good price. I think this course fits his game pretty well. And then I'm going to drop down a little bit to Scott Piercy at 8,000. If we look at his game log, he's had a pretty solid recent results. Since his missed cut in February, he's finished 17th, uh, 17th at the match play, which wasn't a DraftKings event, 19th, 29th, and 23rd. Again, he hasn't put up crazy DraftKings scores during these times, but he's a pretty good birdie or better uh, percentage golfer. And at $8,000, I think it's a pretty good price. So those are my four golfers. I won't show you guys the rest of the model. You have to be a Fantasy Lab subscriber to see my whole model. But you guys saw the top uh, players here that are rated at the top. And my four uh, favorite GPP picks in the mid-range, seven to 9000 So I'm not too sure what I'm doing with the higher price players yet. I'm going to figure that out tonight when I'm building my lineups. But those are my four picks for the Byron Nelson Championship. If you guys enjoy these type of videos where I just kind of talk and give my thoughts, make sure you click that thumbs up button on YouTube and I'll continue to do them. All right, guys, good luck in your contest this week. Hope you guys make some money. Cheers.